What's up guys, Spin Firearms here and a little bit of a different setup right now. We're at my father-in-law's house, but you know me, I like to put out content. Anyways, today we're going to be comparing two handguns that you guys wanted to see. And I just want to say this, I am still sick, um, still recovering, runny nose, all that stuff. So we're just going to have to deal with it for today. But this was a viewer requested, that's something we do over here on this channel. If you have a video that you want to see, put it in the comments. Um, one of the videos was the DB380 from Diamondback. Gen 4. So Gens 1 through 3 have been really shaky for a lot of people. Some people had good luck with the Gen 3s. Other people did not. Um, for me, I only have Gen 4s and I've had zero issues. They wanted to see that compared to the Ruger LCP Max. Now, why would they want that? Because the Bodyguard 2.0 and LCP Max honestly run the pocket carry game. They do. You can't beat their capacity considering this is 10 plus 1 and then you can use the 12 round mag as well, right? Whereas something like this is six plus one. And I do believe they have a seven plus one with the pink extension somewhere out there. But why even compare the two when stuff like the Ruger, LCP Max, and Bodyguard 2.0 have more capacity? Well, this is half the price. Until this specific model came out. So the 75th anniversary, which has the stainless, it has the better trigger. Um, this came out, I've seen it as low as 300 in some places. I think I paid 350 or 299 for it. That's a steal. But for some people, they want something cheaper. But the other benefit you get on the Diamondback 380 is something smaller. It's an overall ridiculously small handgun. That's it in my hand versus the Ruger LCP Max in my hand. And we'll do a quick comparison real quick. Sorry, still getting used to this setup. We'll go slide to slide real quick because the Diamondback does have a nice beaver tail, which really does help with shootability. That's slide to slide. And that's frame to frame. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. And then width, they're pretty dang even up top, but you come down below and that Diamondback is going to be a bit thinner as well as shorter. The Diamondback DB380 is my smallest handgun. It's not my thinnest. My thinnest is the Beretta Pico, but overall footprint dimension wise, it is my smallest. But one thing they did really well with it is its overall feeling. It is super thin, similar to like an LCP but it feels good in the hand for how small it is. Obviously your hand is just gonna eat it alive, but at the same time, it doesn't feel that bad. It comes with Glock pattern sights. They are not night sights, but you have an orange front sight, front post, and then two white dots in the rear, which is an upgrade compared to something like an original LCP or like an original bodyguard, right? The new bodyguard 2.0 and LCP Max come with night sights. As you can see, you have a really nice Really nice front sight with a white outline tritium and then a textured rear, blacked out rear. Really nice sights on the LCP Max. Now, once again, why get something like this? I've seen these brand new for as low as $200. In my opinion, that's an absolute steal. Not a lot of people are gonna carry these as their main carries. For instance, this is my main carry. Look at the size difference. The only time this comes with me or this comes with me is when I need deep, deep concealment. Now, when would that be, right? For instance, my daughter's sixth birthday party was at like a jump house, trampoline par um, house yesterday, literally just yesterday. And you know, it's a bunch of kids, a bunch of parents, staff, you do not want to cause a scene. I know a lot of gun tubers and stuff, they, they carry, um, I don't know what they do for situations like this, but you're not carrying a Glock 17 appendix. You can't carry 15 round mag appendix. That would just be ridiculous at a trampoline park with your children as well as other people's children. But you need to have something on you. When you're responsible for 10 to 15 other children, I feel like it is my duty to have a handgun on me. Regardless if it's the smallest thing, doesn't matter. It's that I have it on me. So yesterday, honestly, I carried the LCP Max. Um, but to be honest, this is a great option as well. Yes, it's only six plus one. But like I said, these are only specific places you're going to take this. Everywhere else, I'm carrying my Glock 26, Glock 27, my Hellcats, stuff like that. Now let's compare it to an XDS 7 plus 1 real quick. 7 plus 1 a 9 millimeter for the XDS, 6 plus 1 a 380 for the Diamondback. You see that? So even a very small setup like an XDS makes this handgun look ridiculously small. Then up top, slide-wise... Now, another benefit of the Diamondbacks compared to the Rugers is I've had no rust, rust issues. I have the DB9, and I also have two DB380 Gen 4s. Like I said, get the Gen 4s, do not get the Gen 3s. But no rust issues. 
none whatsoever. Um, one thing I will say is they're very shootable for their size. In my opinion, this shoots better than an original LCP and the original bodyguard. One of the benefits of the DB380 is its trigger. The trigger is actually really, really nice on it. Crisp, clean, and a nice reset for a pocket pistol. It is a, like there's no, no grit, no sponginess, nothing. But then you hit this nice, defined, reasonably heavy wall. Like, not too heavy to the point where you're going to throw shots, but heavy enough for pocket carry, which is what you want. And then a nice clean break. The reason why the LCP Max and Bodyguard 2.0 has a better trigger is because their plan was people are going to carry this as a main carry still. People are going to carry this appendix. Um, they're going to carry 3 o'clock because it is just a bit bigger to the point where you could make this your main carry as well as with the capacity. They are cleared. See, this is a lighter trigger, and not a lot of people want that for pocket carry, and I get that. And then once again, for pocket carry, you want a Kydex holster. And if you've been following the channel, since I'm a big fan of pocket holsters, and I don't think any company has done their due diligence and put out a really different, good pocket holster, we are releasing our own pocket holster. Stay tuned. My buddy Dan and I have been working on a prototype for months now, and we will be releasing it, and it's going to be the craziest Pocket holster you guys have never seen before. Sorry, the lighting looks really weird on my eyes. Anyways, no rust issues, nice sights. The recoil spring and guide rod on this thing is super heavy. So if you have um, you know, arthritis or pain in your hands or trouble manipulating a handgun with your hands, this handgun's not for you. Um, also, there is no slide stop. What they did is basically like the CZP-10M, as well as other Micro 9s, no slide stop. If you're gonna use this thing, what does it matter? This is up close and personal, self-defense. You're gonna drop those six rounds, get a click, and chances are you're never gonna reload in the first place for self-defense. Like I said, this is an up close and personal handgun, deep concealment, this should not be your main carry. Where is that? LCP Max, Bodyguard 2.0, I can understand those um, as a main carry. In terms of recoil, actually manages recoil better than the bodyguard. There are a lot of benefits that DB380 has over the Ruger. Ruger, like I said, they have rust issues. I always tell this story. At this local gun store that I go to, they had a Ruger LCP sitting in the case, display case, right? Which is a place they're supposed to show you the handgun that you wanna buy, right? They're supposed to make it look appealing. And it's rusting. It's literally just sitting there rusting. And I was just like, that's Ruger handguns. Not the old Ruger, that's the new Ruger handguns. Don't get me wrong, I love Ruger but I can't stand rusting. And in a pocket pistol, there's gonna be moisture. When you're jogging, biking, being active, there's gonna be moisture, right? Whereas the DB380s actually handle that really well, and I've never had any spotting or anything. Also, it takes down like a Glock. I believe this is a 2.75 inch barrel, and on the DB 9mm Gen 4, it is a three inch barrel. Really nice texturing throughout the whole grip. I actually think I prefer it over the um, LCP Max. And like I said, you can find these brand new for 200. I think I picked mine up for 220, um, somewhere in that ballpark. And I've had no issues. Now, one thing you gotta do with all these pocket pistols is you gotta change your way that you shoot, right? Because it's so thin, your finger protrudes. So you're gonna have to curl. And when you're, you don't want your thumb all the way past the barrel. So you're gonna have to pull back. And it's just gonna change your grip just a little bit right but such a nice clean crisp trigger there is no trigger safety but heavy enough to where it's not going to accidentally go off nothing can catch on that it's actually a really nice defensive uh pistol trigger i really like it you not for your sights it's just a good good cheap budget option now would i choose this over every pocket um pistol i own no but for the price, I would say it's the best for the money. That's not a diss. I'm just saying, if I had 250 bucks, this is what I would go to. I like it better than my original LCP. I like it better than my Taurus Spectrum. Uh, I like it better than my Pico from Beretta, 100%. It is a great, um, great handgun. Once again, I'll show you next to a Glock 26. This right here is the reason why you would carry something like this. It's simple. Also, traveling, right? Going behind enemy lines, you're going through Chicago, you're, you know, whatever the case may be. You want sketchy places, you want something on you. Something like this is small, tiny, can fit anywhere. Another thing is for a lot of women, I know people don't recommend purse carry, but as long as you're vigilant on top of things, watching out where you're going, being alert, um, keeping something in your purse can be a good thing and a good way to carry. But you want it secured, 
This is nice because it can fit in almost anything. And for men, it can fit in almost any pocket, whereas a lot of people do struggle fitting stuff like this, like an XDS or a Glock 43 in the average pocket. Now, it has a nice beaver tail, which really helps to secure that handgun in your hand. I get two full fingers and I have really fat fingers on the handgun. And like I said, you just adjust your grip a little bit and you're gonna be good to go. The DB380 is worth it, in my opinion. Um, but like I said, for a main carry, you get something a little bigger. You know, even the XDS is fine for a main carry, but I would prefer something with more capacity, like a Glock 26, Shield Plus, whatever. But if you have $250, you just want a backup gun. You just want something when you're walking your dog, walking to the mailbox, um, something simple, deep concealment. It's an awesome way to go. Now let's talk about ammo real quick. I have these gold dots right here. Never had a single malfunction with any single gold dot that I've ever shot. 40, 9 millimeter, 380. But I do not recommend these for um, pocket carry. The one thing I would say is if your specific model, like mine don't have any problems, but if your specific model does not run solid projectiles, then you might have to run that. This is what I carry mainly, and I've never had any issues. Sometimes it might take a polishing of a feed ramp. It might take, you know, breaking in your handgun, whatever the case may be. Pocket pistols tend to be cheap. Therefore, sometimes it just takes, you know, a little bit more shooting for all the parts to mesh and align and come together to function the way it should. But this right here is an Underwood Extreme Defender solid projectile in 380. They rip. They actually have some power coming out um, behind them. And like I said, hollow points do not expand properly out of 380s. There's just not enough barrel. And I guess I should say smaller bar barrel 380s, especially in wintertime, stuff like that. You want a solid projectile. Anything is better than nothing. There are people out there that will say only 9mm is the only thing I'll carry. But then life becomes miserable. I hate to say it. You want something you can deep conceal. I'm telling you, it'll change your carry life. I have had endless amounts of people that come on this channel and say, you know, your way of thinking has changed my life in terms of carry. I now carry something everywhere I go. Before, you know, I have a Glock 19. I don't want to take it to this, you know, the sporting event, or I don't want to take it here to my kids thing, whatever. But now I just slip this in my pocket and I don't feel outgunned. I don't have any problems. The other thing I want to mention is if you are gonna pocket oop wrong holster, if you are gonna pocket carry, you have to practice drawing from the pocket. You can't just throw it in your pocket and call it good. You have to practice your draw, you have to practice with that holster to make sure that you get a good, you know, clean, even draw. Um, it's gonna work out for you. But like I said, it is smaller than the LCP Max. It's cheaper than the LCP Max by about hundred dollars I do think the LCP Max is a better handgun, but at the same time. I love my DBs. I have no problem with them. Uh, for instance, if I wasn't carrying this yesterday, I would have no problem if this is what I was carrying. It's just the capacity battle is hard to argue with. Um, and since they did come out with the stainless version, uh, a little bit less rusting problems with the Rugers. But yeah, that's the DB380. Chris the Ruger LCP Max. Both great. I'm telling you, pocket carrier will change your life. Thanks for watching, guys.